currently at home in Germany at my parents' place and I noticed five interesting things that are totally common here, but not in the US. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Feli. I've been living in Cincinnati, Ohio since 2016, but originally I'm from Munich, Germany, which is where I am right now. And even though Germany and the US are both Western developed countries that have a whole lot in common with each other, there's some significant differences in the way that people live their day-to-day -day lives including everyday items that you'll find in pretty much every German household, but not in the US. Number one is an electric kettle. In German, we call this Wasserkocher, and it's a super standard kitchen item that you'll find in almost every German kitchen. Even in student dorms that don't have a full kitchen, most people have at least an electric kettle so that they can heat up some water without having to use a stove. This is my parents' kettle, but they literally come in all different shapes and sizes. And yes, of course you can get these in the US, they do sell them, but I literally never see these in American households. I think the only kitchens I've ever seen these in belong to people from my German bubble in the US, so fellow Germans, people who had been to Germany before, people who were studying German, etc. They're mostly used for making beverages, such as tea. In the US, a lot of people make tea by heating up their water in the microwave, which was completely unheard of for me when I first moved there. Or some people just use a regular kettle on the stove, which just takes a lot longer than using an electric kettle. So I've always wondered why the US of all places, the land of convenience, hasn't really adopted the electric kettle. Especially among students, I've always found this surprising. I've lived with a lot of roommates over the years, all college students. I think it was over 20 different roommates in four different places, and not a single one of them had an electric kettle, even though it would have come in super handy for a lot of them. Besides tea, another very common use for the kettle here is to make coffee, drip coffee. Which brings me right to item number two. These things. In German, I think they're officially called Filterhalter, but I'm not quite sure what you would call them in English. Amazon calls them drip coffee filter cone, pour over coffee maker, or coffee dripper. But either way, this is how a lot of Germans, especially in single households, make their coffee in the morning. You boil your water in the kettle, place your coffee dripper on a mug, add a coffee filter, put on your coffee grounds, and then pour the boiling water over it and let it drip. Again, yes, I know that these exist in the US. Ben said they're kind of a hipster thing, but I just don't remember ever seeing these in someone's kitchen. I feel like most people either have a full-on coffee maker for drip coffee, so they put the coffee filter into the coffee maker instead of something like this, or they have a French press or a Keurig or something like that, but I haven't seen your typical German one cup drip coffee in the US. I'm not alone in Germany, by the way. Ben is with me too. Hello. And it's been about a year since you were in Germany last Yeah, about time. a year. October 1st last year. Yeah, and in the last few months, you've been kind of preparing for this by yes. taking lessons on LiveXP. LiveXP is an online platform where you can find language tutors for private one-on-one -on -one language lessons. You can choose from over 2,000 tutors and more than 35 languages from all around the world and improve your conversation skills, work on your pronunciation, or brush up on your vocab and grammar. So now that we're here, how are you doing with the German around you? Ausgezeichnet. Super. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I've been doing a pretty good amount of lessons. Yeah. I've stuck with one tutor. His name is Ozzy. He's really, really cool. He kind of has made the lessons built around me. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the things that we've been doing is like building questions, verb conjugating, pretty simple stuff. And then we kind of went on into grammar. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed since I've been here this time, I'm understanding a whole lot more. Yeah. I was around 40 to 50%. Like, yeah, you always said that. You were yeah, always like, yeah, that. I understand about 50%, but like you couldn't really speak that much or you yeah. weren't confident enough to speak yeah, I'm that still, much. Yeah, I'm still kind of not very confident speaking, Yeah. but I'm understanding at least 60 to 70% of yeah. mostly all the conversations. For I'm sure, and to. I can tell that too, because like we're just sitting there with like six people at the dining table just speaking German about, you know, some complicated issue yeah. and you're just suddenly like, oh, were you talking about this and this? And we're like, yeah, how did you even get that? Yeah, yeah. and I like that. <laughs> yeah. I will say, I know I just said that I don't feel comfortable talking. I feel comfortable talking about like introducing myself yeah. at least. I think you've been become a lot more confident. Yeah. Like I can tell like you don't feel like embarrassed to say German. Yeah, words. I'll just say yeah. it. So one of the cool things about Ozzy is that he's built lessons for my interest in photography, like vocab, 
uh, sentences and mm -hmm. everything like that. Such as? <laughs> uh, so, ich bin uh, Innenarchitektur und Reisefotograf. Sehr gut, okay. Uh, ich fotograf Gebäude. Ja, ich fotografiere <laughs> Gebäude. Ja, ich ja. fotografiere uh -huh. Gebäude. Ja, sehr gut. Uh, gestern war super. Ich habe in München uh, die Frauenkirche fotografiert. Ja. Yeah. So, uh, Damn. ausgezeichnet. Yeah, sehr gut. You can use LiveXP on your phone in the app or in your browser, by the way. You can use all of these filters to find just the right tutor for you. You can watch their introduction video and then book your first lesson with just a few clicks. With my code Feli, you can book a trial lesson for only 99 cents. And with the code Feli30, you'll get a 30% discount on any LiveXP subscription. Just scan this QR code or click on the link in the info box below and check it out. All right, I'll get out of the way. Back to the video. <laughs> okay, I promise we'll move out of the kitchen in a second, but there's one last kitchen item that you never see in the US, and it's this fancy looking thing here, a soda stream. Germans love sparkling water. When you ask for water here, you'll often get sparkling water as the default. I think it's just because most Germans find it more refreshing than still water and they also love to make schorle with it, so spritzer. Whether that's juice spritzer, like apfelschorle, where we mix apple juice with sparkling water, or even wine spritzer, weinschorle, this is most definitely the number one most popular beverage in Germany. That's why many Germans buy bottles on bottles of water at the store every week, but some also just make their sparkling water at home with a soda stream. You just fill up your bottle with tap water, put it in, and then press the button until it's sparkling. Until it farts. <laughs> In the back, you have this cartridge that's filled with CO2, and that's what puts the carbonation in the water. So instead of buying all of this water at the store, all you gotta do is get a new cartridge every few months, which is why this is a pretty common item in German kitchens. Maybe not quite as common as the kettle, but you'll definitely come across it a lot. Soda Stream even sells syrup so that you can make your own homemade soda with this. I've never tried that though, so if you have, let me know in the comments if that actually works. In the US, I think Soda Stream is becoming a little more popular because we just saw at the store the other day, but since Americans aren't very big on sparkling water to begin with, there really isn't as big of a market for something like this. Okay, so now we're finally moving out of the kitchen and into the entryway or hallway where in most German households you find this. A Schulöffel, as we call it, literally translated to shoe spoon, but in English, of course, you call this a shoe horn. So from what I know, in the US, these are more known as something that older people use or men that need to wear dress shoes every day. But in Germany, these are just your regular everyday item for the whole family. <laughs> no, but really, I think we even used to have a kid's one when we were little. And in a lot of families, I know that the kids were taught to use the shoe horn instead of their fingers or whatever to put on their shoes for good men. I will say I personally don't use a shoehorn and I never really have except for when I was a child But I also don't drink coffee and prefer still water over sparkling water. So I mean Am I even German? So I don't think every German uses this thing, but I would say that most households here at least have a shoehorn available at the entrance in case it's needed, even if it's just one of these short ones. But for pros, of course, they'll have these really long ones where you don't even have to bend down anymore. And for the last point, we moved down here to the basement to my dad's workbench because the last item that you'll find in every German household, but that most Americans have probably never even seen before is this, a Zollstock or Metastab. This is something you'll find in every tool bag in Germany. My dad literally has three, then he has a little guy. Like these are all the ones that I just found in like a 15 minute search. But what even is this? It's a measuring tool. In the US, people almost exclusively use measuring tapes, which do exist here as well, but they haven't fully replaced these things. In English, I think they're sometimes referred to as a yardstick, even though I think technically a yardstick is a stick that's one yard long that doesn't necessarily fold like this. On Amazon, they're sold as a folding wood ruler. And I would know because at hardware stores like Home Depot, you can't really find these in the US. So I ordered one on Amazon because I find these really practical, especially if you just want to measure the height of something really quick. You can just do it like this or you want to measure something by yourself and you want to make sure that it's 
straight, sideways, you don't need a second person to hold it up for you. There have been a few situations in the last couple of years where we had contractors over at our house in the US um, to give us a quote and they didn't have their tape measure on them. So I would just hand them this and they look at it so confused because these are so uncommon in the US. What are some other things that we have here in Germany that simply don't exist in the US or vice versa? Let me know in the comments below and also let me know what other videos you want us to film while we're here in Germany. Even though we won't have that much time Time because our group trip with 24 of you is starting next week, but we'll see what we can do. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. We're getting really close to that half a million subscribers mark. Also, definitely make sure to follow me on Instagram at Feely from Germany to see what we're up to while we're here. And with that, I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss!